In the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. This morning we are very blessed and honored by the presence of Cardinal Mario Crack, who is visiting the Philippines, attending the uh, uh, conferences, and uh, gracing the uh, Philippines with this presence. So on behalf of the Manila Cathedral community, I would like to happily welcome you, Your Eminence, Cardinal Mario Grecht, to the Manila Cathedral. Benvenuto. Thank you. But I think it's the other way around, no? I am graced with your presence making experience of your church is really very enriching for me, for my ministry. And today, I would like you to join me to thank the Lord because 18 years ago, I was ordained as a bishop. But again, visiting this church enriches my ministry. My dear brothers and sisters, let us recall to our mind our sins and together ask forgiveness. You were sent to hail the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, mercifully pour out your Spirit upon us so that our hearts may possess that strong love by which the martyr St. Vincent triumphed over all bodily torments. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the second book of Samuel. 
All the tribes of Israel came to David in Hebron and said, Here we are, your bone and your flesh. In days past, when Saul was our king, it was you who led the children of Israel out and brought them back. And the Lord said to you, You shall shepherd my people Israel and shall be commander of Israel. When all the elders of Israel came to David in Hebron, King David made an agreement with them there before the Lord, and they anointed him king of Israel. David was 30 years old when he became king, and he reigned for 40 years. Seven years and six months in Hebron over Judah, and 33 years in Jerusalem over all Israel and Judah. Then the king and his men set out for Jerusalem against the Jebusites who inhabited the region. David was told, You cannot enter here. The blind and the lame will drive you away, which was their way of saying, David cannot enter here. But David did take the stronghold of Zion, which is the city of David. David grew steadily more powerful, for the Lord of hosts was with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. My faithfulness and mercy shall be with him. Once you spoke in a vision, and to your faithful ones you said, On a champion I have placed a crown over the people I have set a youth. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. I have found David, my servant. With my holy oil, I have anointed him, that my hand may be always with him, and that my arm may make him strong. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. And through my name shall his horn be exalted. I will set his hand upon the sea, his right hand upon the rivers. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The scribes who had come from Jerusalem said of Jesus, He is possessed by Beelzebul, and by the prince of demons he drives out demons. Summoning them, he began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, 
he cannot stand. That is the end of him. But no one can enter a strong man's house to plunder his property unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can plunder his house. Amen, I say to you, all sins and all blasphemies that people utter will be forgiven them. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an everlasting sin. For they had said, He has unclean spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Listening to the gospel, what comes to my mind is that we have two agents in the story, the scribes and Jesus. They are supposed to be in dialogue, connected, but notice how each of them has a different attitude. The scribes and Jesus. They belong to sort of two different schools with two different convictions. Yet the scribes, knowing that Jesus is not in agreement with them, they call him names, you know. They say, look, he's possessed by Beelzebub. Sort of they use, they are scolding him, you no? Know? On the other hand, Jesus, although he had a different message, a different way of life, a different message he tries to enter into true dialogue with them and instead of demonizing his critics he tries to enlighten them he tries to open up a true dialogue knowing that through dialogue one can shorten the distances. One can really help the other party to understand better himself and the others. My brothers and sisters, this is also our experience even in the church. We have different groups. We do not agree about everything. There are differences. But how do we relate? Do we take the position of the Pharisees and we try to demonize the other party? We try to exclude the other party? to shut the doors for the other party. Or like Jesus, who really tries to enter in the shoes of the other party, notwithstanding that he knew that they, they were contrary, they were not in agreement with him. And he tries to enlighten them and he tries to make himself understood. This is, I think, what 
Pope Francis calls the culture of the encounter. The culture of the encounter. If in our daily life, when we really meet one another, we try to enter into a deep, sincere dialogue, trying to understand one another, notwithstanding our differences, dialogue, encounter, can really shorten our differences and can really open new venues for each and everyone. As you know, this week we are, the church is celebrating also the week of prayers for Christian unity. So the ecumenical dialogue, the interreligious dialogue are a gift that the Lord, that the Holy Spirit is giving to us. Let us, all of us, commit ourselves to foster this culture of encounter. Amen. Please stand. My brothers and sisters gathered together in Christ who conquers all evil, let us come confidently to the Father with our prayerful intentions. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church may be renewed and give faithful witness to the proper values of life and so help restore a fallen world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That warring nations may learn to live in harmony and mutual cooperation in bringing peace to the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That all believers in Christ may overcome division and become one in the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the sick, especially those who are handicapped, may receive comfort and attention from those who care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the faithful departed may be delivered from the evil of eternal death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear. hear our prayer. God our Father, <clears throat> keep healing us from all evil and let your goodness shine in us by the power of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Sanctify our offerings by your blessing, O Lord, we pray. And by your grace, may we be set free, a fire, with the flame of your love, through which St. Vincent overcame every bodily torment, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyr Vincent, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your, your power and on the feeble bestow strength to bear your witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, God of heaven and earth are full, full of your glory. glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in, in the, the highest. highest. Blessed, Blessed is he, is he who, comes who comes in the, the name, name of the, of the Lord. Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the, the highest. highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the beautiful, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop, all religious and clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, with Saint Vincent, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. Thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass, trespass against, against us. us. And lead, lead us not into, into temptation, temptation but deliver us from, from evil. evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, we pray. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Please stand. Let us pray. May the sacred mysteries of which we have partake in O Lord we pray give us the determination which made your blessed martyr Vincent faithful in your service victorious in suffering through Christ our Lord Amen The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. Enjoy the day. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Yeah. Uh -huh.